Now we're going to go ahead and install all of our drives. We're going to install two solid state drives. One is a 2.5 inch drive that will go into a drive tray. The other is our PCI Express solid state drive, which we've shown previously. We also have a spare magnetic drive, a magnetic disk drive, and that's going to go into a removable tray. We're also going to install an optical drive. In this case, it's a CD-ROM slash DVD-ROM drive. And finally, we'll show our USB flash drive. That's all the long-term storage that we'll be dealing with with our computer. So let's get started. All right, let's install our drives. We got a couple we're going to work with. The first is this solid state drive. It's a two and a uh, two and a half inch drive, SATA. And we also have a three and a half inch magnetic disc. They can both be installed into these removable trays. You just pull these out by pushing the tabs together. Pull that right out. And you can see here we have options to screw in just about any type of drive. These white grommets are rubber and they help to protect magnetic disks because the magnetic disks have uh, moving components. So you want to shock mount those. So we would attach that on top of the rubber grommets or you would do it this way. And you can see that the screw holes are going to line right up. And once we get it screwed in, we would place the drive in and just slide it right in there. Now, I'm not actually going to use this tray for this drive because this is going to go in a removable bay, which is pretty cool. We'll show that in a little bit. But you can use this tray for the solid states, the two and a halves. You can see here we have four screw holes here, and they match up with the screw holes on this. Now, normally, I would install this drive this way and screw it in so that the ports are here and then the whole thing would get placed into the uh, case and I would run the cables underneath here so that they're out of the way. But I'm actually going to screw this in now in the opposite direction just so you can see the actual port connections. And I'll do that now. Okay, so I've screwed in the drive and make sure that you use the right screws with these because uh, the wrong screw could strip it and uh, could cause damage over time. Uh, and it could kind of bend or uh, stretch the drive a little bit. You don't want that. Use the right type of screws and just tighten them enough so that it stays firm. So we'll take the drive and we'll place this into the uh, case. Just slide it back into the bay. Snap it in. And now we just have to connect our power and our data. And we have our power connection coming from the power supply here. And this has several connectors. Here's our SATA power. And you can see the uh, notch right here. That's going to match up with the tab or notch here. So we'll connect that guy now. Make sure it's in there firmly. Move that out of the way. And then we need to connect our SATA data cable. Now we have a couple uh, options here. This is where the main SATA uh, revision three connectors are. But we also have SATA Express over here. And that uses SATA revision 3.2, which gets the higher data transfer rates by making use of the PCI Express lanes. Now, our hard drive doesn't have that capability. It only does revision 3.0, so that's not necessary. But keep in mind, if you have a drive that does the 3.2 capability, it's compliant with that. You have to connect it to that uh, SATA Express connector. And uh, those are backward compatible as well. So you could actually use this for SATA 3.0 drives, but I'm just going to use the standard ports for that. And here we have the SATA cable. And normally when you connect it into a motherboard like this with the side mounted ports, you want the tab facing up. I'll connect that in there now and snap that in place. And then the other end, we're going to connect to our drive 
and you can see the tab here or the notch right here. So we're going to line that up, make the connection, snap it in place, and we're good to go. We've got our SATA drive installed. All right, so now we're going to install our front load drives like our uh, optical drive. And these are five and a quarter drives that go in the front bays here. Now, I've already opened up one of the bays, but to do this, you pull off the plastic plate, and these you hold on to in case you don't have a drive in that bay. And underneath there, you'll see that there's a metal uh, piece that you have to remove. And uh, you don't need to do this unless you are going to use the bay. Now, I'm going to use both bays. So we just remove this by twisting it. We'll just keep twisting it. until it comes out, you could discard that. And the drive on most of today's cases can be either screwed in here, or on some of today's cases, you can just be slid right in and the, uh, the bay will have arms that accept it automatically. And you might have a release arm that you have to pull or push in order to place that drive in there. There we go. And it snaps into place. And now on the back, we would connect our SATA uh, data and power connectors, just like we did with the hard drive. And then this guy would be ready to rock. Now we're also going to use this removable drive tray. And this guy's pretty cool. You can install the hard drive right in here and it has SATA connectors and SAT con a SATA connectors on the back. So we can plug in basically any three and a half inch drive in that guy. So we'll slide this guy in also. Okay, so I snapped the drive tray in there and just finished screwing in the uh, couple screws to hold it in place a little bit more. And I'll probably screw a couple more on, on the other side here. But now we have that tray and we could take our hard drive, which has its SATA connectors, and just slide that guy right into the tray like so. Press that guy in, close the door and that makes the connection. Now this drive can be read, and it comes with a little key to uh, lock it in place. Pretty standard key, but that'll lock it to allow it to read the drive. If it's in a locked mode, you won't be able to open the door. So it's a good idea to use that if you can. But this way we can read any three and a half inch drive right from this guy, as long as it's SATA, and uh, you know swap them as we need to. So that's great for me, I use that for older drives. But my main drive for the operating system and the applications will be the uh, SSD that we installed previously down here. And now all we have to do is make the connections on the back for the uh, SATA and power, the data and power for both of these drives. And we have now our removable drive, our optical drive, and down in here we have the SATA uh, solid state drive. And previously we installed that PCI Express uh, card. That's our other solid state drive. So now all of our drives are installed and we can start cleaning up the cables and get everything finalized and get ready to boot the system. So that's it for this sub lesson on installing these storage devices.